name is Skylar Nolan and this is my district profile on the JV Joint Unified School District. I chose this district because I was a long-term substitute last year from October till the last day of the school. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to know a little bit more about the district I work for, uh, starting with the fact that this district operates uh, 11 different schools in the San Bernardino County area. There's Alta Loma High, JV Community Day, JV District Online High, JV High, Colony High, Etiwanda, Los Osos, Montclair, Ontario. Ontario is where I worked at, uh, Rancho, and Valley High. I asked someone that works in the district what they thought were the district's defining characteristics. And the responses I heard back were, that the district is primarily a high school district that covers multiple cities in the you know, San Bernardino County area. Um, they offer a tremendous amount of opportunities for staff to get professional development at district-sponsored events or on-campus opportunities, um, and that one of the highest it is one of the highest-paying um, districts in the California state. So the demographic composition of JP Joining Unified School District uh, consists of, give or take, 23,000 students. Um, out of the 11 schools that I was talking about earlier, eight of them are comprehensive high schools. Um, one is a continuation, one is online, and one is an adult uh, school. And surprisingly, or I guess not surprisingly, it's the fourth largest high school district in California. Uh, below, there's a list of the diversity percent percentages and also a visual chart to see the uh, large difference with the um, comparison of Hispanic and Latino students. Um, I was as well surprised with the percentages below with the LI, EL, and FY students. But this shows what I'm working with or what I did work with as far as where my students came from. Um, so here are some financial trends and where we are at. Um, this is our expenditure report, uh, spending a total of $281,802,100. dollars but you can see as our revenue is $276,204,362. Wow. This is a lot of money. And when I first saw it, I started actually comparing it to schools like Ranch Cucamonga District. Um, but realized that this is a large district, so a lot, of, a lot of money is going to be spent to help students succeed through this district. So the strategic plan for the LCAP, um, there are five goals. All um, JP Joint Union um, high school district students will uh, demonstrate college and career readiness. Um, the district will, district will provide meaningful professional development and research-based strategies and technology implementation to improve classroom instruction and support um, increases in student achievement. Three, the district will provide safe and caring campus environments that engage students in their schools. Uh, four, the district will provide effective communication and strong relationships with all stakeholders. And five, uh, the district will provide fiscal solvency and transparency for all stakeholders. Referring to number one, how they showed examples of this, they utilize the College Readiness Block Grant to support low-income English learners and foster youth with a variety of actions and services, um, such as fee reductions for AP tests, SAT prep classes, and increased staffing and access to AP classes, and A through G college preparatory classes, and so on. Uh, also, career day. <laughs> um, and the total expenditure was roughly like 26 million, a crazy number. Uh, two, how they showed this. Um, 
for example, the Career Technical Education Incentive Grant um, funds uh, were, were received during the 2015 and 16 school year and have allowed the district to expand students' access to cur current technology and innovative relevant curriculum. Um, and the total expenditures were roughly around 40, or sorry, $4 million. Um, referencing towards number three, how they showed an example of this. Um, they provided guidance for students and ensured their positive mental health played a major role in their potential for success. Um, the district provides extensive counseling support for all students, and the total expenditure is roughly $20 million. Um, and four, how they showed an example of this, the, um, for instance, the director of community relations worked with the instruction division to administer and monitor the LCAP survey and to develop strategies to make the survey accessible to Spanish and Chinese parents. Um, the strategy resulted in substan substantial increase in responses in the last year with 1,700 or so parents, staff, and community, um, members, responses, um, and roughly 6,000 student responses for a total of uh, a 9% increase in respondents. Uh, there was a total of uh, $706,000 uh, in total expenditure. And then five, um, how they showed an example of this too, uh, the district ensures that they will achieve uh, positive certifications at each interim. Uh, successful completion of audits and accurate multi-year uh, correction, sorry, projection reviews with a total expenditure of something like $569,000. Um, and then I roughly found on the LCAP that um, approximately 38716 uh, sorry, thirty-eight million seven hundred sixteen thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars. I can read <laughs> of LCFF's funds were used during the two hundred two thousand eighteen two thousand nineteen school year. <laughs> I received a few responses from the district on the topic of recent changes. Um, so two years ago, the district, due to the LCAP funding and stakeholder input, um, it has shifted its focus to both career and college readiness for all students. So um, also the career component is now um, from the LCAP is expected in all classes and not just career and technical courses. Um, I also heard that the professional development priorities change as the school year progressed. So for the example, uh, the district used remaining source resources in the Educator uh, Effectiveness Grant, EEG, uh, to increase professional development in areas such as uh, math instruction, um, implementation of the history social science framework, um, and so on. So some strengths. Um, my master teacher, she threw in th her answer here for me too. She wanted to respond because we were talking about this. Um, they have a good working relationship with the teacher union. Um, she noticed that the district remains fiscally solvent during the financial crisis and continues to make a deliberate decision um, make deliberate decisions about how to maintain this in the event of another crisis. Um, the district is also proud of significant increases in parent engagement efforts, parent trainings, and involvement at each of its um, school, school sites. Um, a full-time director of community relation works, um, relations works with parent groups and all sites to develop communities or opportunities, communities for parents to participate in district and school decision making to take advantage of parent training opportunities at the district and each school site um, and this really helps because parents become can become more aware about um, the A through G requirements and FAFSA and fees and so on to help students get guaranteed admissions and um, just more success and 
more communication. I really like that. I also wanted to show this equity report as part of the strength because um, I really liked when I read through the LCAP report for Chafee District that um, the suspension rate is pretty low and that the graduation rate is relatively high, it's green, and that the highest performance is English learner progress. So a few challenges I noticed after talking with some people too. Um, the declining enrollment in some cities um, is creating new challenges for staffing and funding, as well as um, as well saw that the um, federal funds to support safe and drug-free schools have been eliminated. Um, a board member at Chafee Joint uh, Union District said that he would ensure that effective prevention and intervention programs and strategies remain a district priority and develop partnerships with parents and community agencies to foster the tradition of safety at all of um, our district schools. I was also told that there is no student busing system for the general population of students, so school boundaries are being moved to accommodate the students who live in the surrounding neighborhoods. Additionally, um, the district needs to know how to best allocate monies to schools that function in vastly diverse socioeconomic areas. Uh, differences like Los Osos have 75 to 80 percent parents with college education and white collar jobs, compared to Ontario that has less than 30 percent of parents with a college education and 85 percent of students qualify for free and reduced lunch. Recommendations. Um, I think that the school should definitely continue with uh, more support with first-year teachers, um, and I think they should focus a lot with long-term substitute teachers as well, because I definitely needed the support when I was there. Additionally, um, they should continue making it a top goal for students to demonstrate career and college readiness and continue increasing um, parent involvement so then everybody's all connected and communicating and um, people will want to get more involved and maybe that would increase um, enrollment. Here are also some additional sources so you guys can see that I have you know information to give. Thank you for listening to my awkward rant. All right have a good day.